scientific tips and tricks to improve at Rocket League. Hi, my name is Carson. I'm an exercise science professional. I'm just going to give some basic motor behavior tips and tricks to help you improve at Rocket League. All right, so what is motor learning? Motor learning is basically repeated practice. It's going to lead to relatively permanent changes for a set activity or skill. It's important to keep in mind that motor learning results from practice or experience. Um, it's not directly observable and learning changes are inferred from certain performance changes. So basically you're going to be motor learning whenever you're playing comp, playing casual, playing in free play, as long as you're deliberately working on a certain skill, whether it be dribbling, air dribbling, aerial car control, anything like that it has to be deliberate in free play. But yeah, that's pretty much what motor learning is. Okay. Let's talk more in depth about skills. So Rocket League is comprised of several different skills, um, whether it be your aerial car control, um, ground control, uh, whether it's your shooting accuracy, trying to aim for the top right corner or the top left corner. Rocket League is a whole bunch of different skills. And whenever you're training, whether it be just playing casually, gonna be in a training pack or in free play, you wanna focus on training a certain skill. You don't wanna just be aimlessly training. To be a little bit more specific, the whole idea or concept of Rocket League is a large serial skill. It's a lot of small discrete skills that are strung up together basically to make a more complicated skill to action. So another major component of Rocket League is your reaction time. And your reaction time interval is just the time period in which the stimulus is presented and ends and when the movement response is started. And so I'm gonna also go more in depth into this later and give some more tips and tricks on how to improve this. And this is also another little visual from the textbook that my professor included in this PowerPoint, if uh, this also helps. In other words, reaction time is the time required to detect and recognize the stimulus and initiate the proper response. And so as the number of stimulus increase, basically this reaction time is also gonna increase. And we can also visually look at this graph and also see that as the number of stimulus increase, the reaction time increase. Okay, so it's pretty self-explanatory, but also movement complexity. The more complex your movement is gonna be, it's going to take more reaction time. It's going to take more thought into it. Okay, and we have that speed and accuracy trade-off. So whenever we're performing a certain skill, we have a tendency to trade off our speed for our accuracy. And so the faster we're reacting, the faster we're having to make this reaction time, the less accurate we're going to be. And sometimes it's important whenever you have enough time, enough breathing room, you got to slow it down. But sometimes in Rocket League, it's a matter of who can get to the ball faster, who can gain that possession. So it's really important whenever you're in your training packs or you're training, you're gonna be working on that speed. You're gonna be pushing yourself outside of that comfort zone so you can get better. All right, let's discuss anticipation. Anticipation is huge, it is slept on. If you can anticipate something happening within your game, such as anticipating a boom across the field or anticipating them to take control or even anticipating them trying to read a flick, it can help reduce your reaction time greatly. It's very crucial. Whenever we go here and look at the benefits of anticipation, you can get your reaction time down to zero zero milliseconds just with anticipation so it's huge very undervalued unfortunately the only downside of anticipation is going to be whenever you get faked we've all been there you get faked there's not much you can do um basically really messes up your reaction time all right so now onto attention your attention is directive active conscious and selective it's part of your working memory your working memory is in your prefrontal cortex it's going to be short duration short-term memory so it's going to be very limited in capacity and stores information for that short duration of time. So roughly for visual representation, this is what your attention will look like. Your attentional resources are going to be split pretty much like a 70, 30, 80, 20 kind of deal. Primary task is going to have around 80 to 70% of that focus for the attention pool. So it's very important whenever you're playing Rocket League to kind of have your attention on the game, especially if you're in comp, you're really focusing on that rank. And so why is this all important? Well, you ever talking on the phone with someone while playing Rocket League or talking to another individual or just thinking about something else or holding another conversation in Discord or in a party call? That's taking away your attentional resources to focus on Rocket League and that's in turn decreasing your reaction time and actually could be costing you some games. So whenever you're playing comp, let's just say sometimes you gotta lock in. And I know this sounds super obvious, but sometimes just can be overlooked. So I made a video that goes into depth about this I and mean, I'll link it in the description and uh, have it pop up here soon but we can have two focuses of our attention we can have an internal focus of attention or we can 
can have an external focus of attention. And to improve your performance, you want to have an external focus of attention. Internal would be focusing on your hand movements on the controller. And an external focus would be focusing on the goal of that task. So saying to yourself, I want to hit that top right, or I want to hit that top left corner. I want to get that flip reset. I want to get that ball on top of my car. I want to hit that power shot. And this is going to help majorly to avoid choking under pressure. And I made a wonderful video about how to avoid choking under pressure in Rocket League. And I highly suggest you go check it out. Um, I'm going to link it as well. Okay, so this one's a huge one. We've got tension and arousal with anxiety. So under high stress situations, we're going to miss out on important sensory information from our environment. And that's what we call inattentive blindness. So we're going to be missing out on key features such as an opponent's going to be up for a challenge. We miss it because we're under so much stress. We're zero booster. We're just trying to get back and we may accidentally commit whenever we miss that stimulus. All right, so now let's talk about motor programs. Pretty much all Rocket League is, is a bunch of motor programs strung together. A motor program is a pre-structured set of movement commands that define and shape the movements. And we can improve these motor programs by practicing a skill. Moving on, we're all unique, we're all different, and we all have different set of skills, and we also have different set of abilities. Now, abilities and skills are not the same thing. An ability is a characteristic that underlies particular skills and is largely inherited genetically, and it's not modifiable by practice. And so that's just genetics. Now, your skills can be modified, and that is something that we can work on, and that's what we are going to try to improve. Don't be so hard on yourself sometimes, but we can all improve our skills. And here's a little visual to give you a little bit of a different perspective to help understand. And to go into a little bit more depth, we don't have control over these abilities like I said we possess roughly 50 different abilities they're independent from one another and we take these abilities and basically use them to help perform these skills okay so this is another visual representation to kind of help on this left column highlighted in yellow these are gonna be our abilities and on the right column we're gonna have all of our skills and as you see these different abilities on this left column funnel into these different types of skills and I hope this gives a little bit better of a better understanding and it's really important to note that these motor learning changes are relatively permanent and they're not going to change. Practice makes perfect. And I know it's very obvious, but science shows that these effects of practice can persist across years. It makes a lot of sense for why you can take really long breaks from Rocket League and come back and be just as good as when you last stopped playing. Make sure your practice is deliberate, it's effortful, goal oriented and that you actively use variants. To go into depth here, you get a lot of benefits. You get improved capability to perform the skills on future demand. You get improved perceptual skills, improved detention, improved motor programs, and improved error detection. So I love this textbook. It gives us a visual representation and gives it a real life situation, shifting gears in a car. And so you see in the early stages of practice at the top, it's a stop and go. But as we move on to middle practice and then later practice, it becomes a more fluid motion. The reaction action time to stop and make the decision is pretty much non-existent and that's what happens with our motor programs whenever we're playing rocket league and we're practicing for these extended periods of time building these more fluid motor programs so a very important aspect of your practice is going to be your warm-up as well and i've made a wonderful video on the warm-up decrement and basically what the warm-up decrement is is it is a loss of performance due to you not being prepared you're not warm you're not actively primed for the activity set and so long story short it's very important that you want to make sure you do some form of warm-up for like at least five to to 15 minutes at the least before you hop into any comp just so you're ready if you made it all the way to the end thank you so much for watching it really means a lot to me and also don't forget that you can apply these motor behavior aspects to just about any video game out there